This tutorial is an introduction to watershed analysis in GrassGIS. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to download terrain data from the National Elevation Dataset, compute watersheds, flow accumulation, extract stream networks, and compute stream order, like so. So, to begin, we're going to create a location in the North American Datum of 1983 in UTM, the Universal Transverse Mercator, um, Zone 15 North, to cover our study site, the Tunica Hills area in Louisiana. Alternatively, you can download my Louisiana dataset for GrassGIS to get started. To, um, the terrain data we're going to use, the National Elevation data set, one way to work with it is to go to the national map to the, um, the basic viewer for downloading and to download um, tiles of the national map. You would then import them with r.import and then patch them together with r.patch. I'll show you the national map viewer here. It's viewer.nationalmap.gov backslash basic. To use this, we would select elevation products and you select the resolution you want. For this tutorial, we'll select either one arc second 30 meter or one third arc second, about 10 meter. I'm going to search for my area, Tunica Hills, and finds it on the map here. Now I could either zoom in and use the current extent, or I could draw a box around the exact area I want to find data for. So let's say something like that. Now, if I select one third arc second, I can hit Find Products. It's going to search and find products. We're going to find two tiles from the national map, so I can look at the footprint. One's on the north side of my study area, and the other's on the south. We can then download these. Right here is GeoTIFFs. Then you would use r.import and grass to import them into the new location. We're instead going to use a plugin for GRASS called r.n.usgs, which will automate this process. In either case, we're going to start GRASS, and in the GRASS startup screen, we're going to create a new location. Alternatively, you could select my um, Louisiana data set as a starting place. So I'm going to create a new location. I'm going to call this Tunica Hills. And we're going to create this by picking a EPSG code. We're going to use the EPSG code for NAD 1983 UTM 15 North. This code, I'll put it in the search bar here, 29615, I believe. And I search for it. Check that again. 26915 search. There we go. Uh, NAT83 UTM15 North. Next. OK. Finish. And we'll start this new location in the permanent map set. Here's my new session of grass. Well, I could extract those tiles from the national map. If I downloaded them, I could extract them, import them with r.import into this new projection, and then patch them. I can automate that process with a plugin r.n.usgs. The first thing I should do is install that. I'll go to Settings, Add-on Extensions, 
and g.extension, install from add-ons. I'll search in the raster add-ons and find r.in.usgs. r.in.usgs and then install it. You'll see that it completes in the command line. And before we can run r.in.usgs, we need to set our computational region, um, the region that it's going to import the tiles for. We could find this by looking at reference data, for example, in my um, Louisiana data set. We could look on a web map and find the boundaries. We could import some vector data and find boundaries for a study area. In this case, I'm going to run the command g.region and I'm going to enter the bounds for my region here, north, south, east, and west. So for this tutorial, you can copy these values. This is on my website at baharman.github.io backslash watershed analysis, watershed in um, watersheds in grass. Let's copy the north coordinates. Coordinate for the southern boundary. Eastern boundary. That's in the Bounds tab. In the Resolution tab, we're going to set the resolution of our region to 10 meters for one-third arc second. If you want to do this at lower resolution um, and uh, have a smaller download and run the computations quicker, you can set this to 30 meter resolution instead. The steps in the tutorial will be a little different in that case. Optionally, we can go to the Effects tab, and we can save this region as, say, Tunica Hills. We'll run the region command, and it's going to set our region to just the area we want to study. We can quickly pull this region up again by using the command g.region, region equals Tunica Hills, and this will set the region to the saved region here. We can also zoom to that easily using the command zoom to saved region now. We're ready to run r.in.usgs, so r.in.usgs. If it's your first time running this command, you may need to append space dash dash ui for user interface. To, um, to force the user interface to launch. When you open r.in.usgs, you need to pick the product. So this add-on can install the National Elevation Dataset, NED, imagery from the National Agriculture Imagery Program, that'll be orthophotographs at generally, I believe, one meter resolution, or you can import LiDAR data. We're going to import the National Elevation data set, and that means we'll need to go to the second tab here, NED, to fill in some parameters next. We're going to name the output map elevation, and we need to set a directory for downloading this. So I'll print Browse, and I'll set my download directory. 
Now in the NED tab, I'm going to pick which NED data set. I have a choice between one arc second, one third arc second, one ninth arc second. This is going to be 30 meter approximately, 10 meter, and 3 meter approximately. So you can pick any of these. For our analysis, the 1 ninth arc second is going to be much higher resolution than we need. Uh, 1 third arc second will make a very nice map of the watershed. Um, it's going to take longer to download this and longer to run the computations. Um, if you want to do this tutorial faster, then select the 1 arc second. That's the 30 meter resolution. The results might not look quite as nice, but this will run more quickly. The, um, the notes in the tutorial on my website are using the one arc second um, resolution, so you'll see um, the settings you need um, for the parameters in the tutorial on my website. We're going to do this in one third arc second um, for this video. The parameters for the subsequent operations will be different depending on which data set you pick, which resolution. So then you will run this. Um, in the uh, optional tab, I recommend picking a resampling method such as bilinear or bicubic because this is continuous data, terrain data. And then run this. Since I've already downloaded these tiles, it's going to go very quickly if you're running this for this region for the first time. The download, depending on which data set you pick, may take um, a minute or even 10 minutes. So I've downloaded the two tiles. It's automatically reprojected them and imported them and patched them. If I look in my Layers tab, it, you'll see that it's added the elevation already. I can right-click on that and zoom to it, and I'll see the terrain data from the National Elevation Map. Now that we've downloaded the elevation map for our region, let's compute the um, shaded relief so that we can visualize this a little nice. We'll look in Modules, Raster, Terrain Analysis, and we're going to compute um, relief, shaded relief. r.relief is the command, and we're going to put in our elevation map here. Our output will be relief. We're going to go to in the Sun Position tab, you could opt optionally change the altitude and azimuth. I'm going to go to the Optional tab, and I'm going to set my um, factor for relief to 3, and run this. And there's my shaded relief map, and I'll close this. Now, to make a nice composite between the elevation and the relief, we're going to use the command r.shade. This is going to drape the elevation map on top of the relief map, r.shade. So the first parameter, the shade, the shaded relief map, is going to be the map we just made relief. The color is going to be our elevation map. And we'll call this the output as shaded relief. We can run this, and it'll probably turn out a little dark. If you want to adjust the colors, you can go to the optional tab, allow overwrite, because we've already run this once. We're going to go to the brighten parameter and set this to, say, 30. We can run this multiple times with overwrite set to find the right value. If that seems too bright, we could try, say, 25 or something. A nice way to modulate um, the strength
strength of the shade on here. Um, a trick I sometimes like is to put the elevation map then on top of this, change the opacity and put it down to maybe 20% and we can soften the effect of the shaded relief a little bit. If we want to add the um, elevation um, color table to this, the legend, uh, I'm going to go to add map elements, add raster legend, and I'm going to set the legend to the elevation map. Optionally, I may apply that so we can see it. Optionally, I may change the font. I'm using the free open source font Leto. You'd have, if you want to do that, you'd have to download this um, from Leto's website. And set the font size, no, say 14. And I may set the screen coordinates for this here with optional. We, you can um, can do, do this with a cursor instead, but I'm going to set this using the um, at parameter in the optional tab here. So this is going to be from the uh, bottom coordinate from uh, the lower left of the screen. So I'm going to set in percentage of the screen. So I'm going to set this from, say, 80, 85 to the top, 95 uh, left. I'm going to go from 2% uh, to maybe 3.5. I'll try that. I'll make this a bit longer. I'll put this down to maybe 75. OK. The nice thing about using the at parameter here is that we can easily, um, when we customize the legend, we can easily save the parameters to reuse this. watershed delineation. So our next step is to um, find the boundary of the watershed for our region. The watershed is the region in which all of the water will drain to a shared single outlet. So for this region right here, the water is all going to drain down here. So let's, um, let's compute that. We're going to use the module r.watershed. So if we go to the modules tab here in the grass layer manager, and we're going to look at the hydrologic modeling um, tools. And here you'll see watershed analysis, r.watershed. I'm going to run that module. Our input map is going to be elevation. And the only other thing we're interested in here on the input page for right now is going to be the threshold. This is the minimum size of the exterior water basin. And to find the right scale of analysis, um, we're, going to, we're going to test some values for this. I'm going to start um, with 10,000 as my threshold parameter. So that's going to be the number, minimum number of cells to find in the watershed. For my output, all I'm going to set here is the output basin map, and I'm going to call this basins. Now, let's go ahead and run this. So, Here's a raster map of the, um, the watersheds that we computed. As we change the size of the threshold and make it larger, it's going to aggregate these watersheds. So watersheds um, can be um, nested within each other, and they, they vary in scale. So if we want to find the larger 
watershed in which these watersheds are nested, we can increase the um, minimum size parameter here. So I set it to say 100,000. You need to go to the optional tab and allow overwrite. If you run this again, it's going to find a, the larger basin that contains the larger watershed that contains all those smaller watersheds. So this, this is a larger basin that contains them all. I may try a value in between that, say 75,000. And good sized large watershed captured right here. Now, we've created a raster map of the watershed. To better visualize this, let's turn it into a vector map. So I'm going to use the um, command r2vect to convert this from raster to vector. In the modules tab, we can look under raster, map type conversion, raster to vector. Our input raster map is going to be basins, and our output vector map will be called basins. Our output feature type will be area, and we can optionally smooth the corners here. Let me go ahead and run this. So this is computed a vector map covering our watershed. If I look in the layers, I can turn off the raster basins. And for the vector basins map, I'll set it to be a transparent fill. If I go to colors, I'm going to set the area of fill color to transparent. Maybe I increase the line weight in the line tab here, and I can start to see the uh, boundary of my watershed. Now I'm interested only in this large watershed here in the center of my map. So I'm going to extract that from the rest of the vector map. There's a number of ways I can do that. I can select this um, with v.extract based on a category number. So if I click here on basins, I use the query tool, I can check that um, this watershed in the vector map has um, category value of 3, and the attribute value of 18. So I could select it with either of those using the command v.extract. Another way I can extract this, so that would be vector um, vector feature selection v.extract. Another way I could select this is with the Select Vector Feature button. I can click here, pull up the Select Feature dialog, and I'm going to click on the area I want here. It's going to extract this feature when I hit Create New Map. The extracted map is going to be called Basins Selection and Some Numbers. What I want to do now is rename that. So I'll use the command g.rename for general commands, g.rename. I'll go to the vector tab, and I'm going to rename this basins selection map to just basin. The naming convention we're going to use in this tutorial is a large basin for um, that's containing watersheds. We could also call this watershed and subwatersheds. I'm going to use the terminology basin for the larger watershed and then watersheds for the smaller watersheds nested within this basin. 
So I've renamed the map layer here, and I can remove these maps. I'll add the new rename vector map, basin, and I'll style it to be um, hollow, for example. At this point, we can now set a raster mask to, um, to this basin. So we can go to modules and look at our raster commands. You'll see r.mask here. For r.mask, we're going to go to the vector tab and we're going to use the map basin, um, the vector map basin as our mask. This will mask all subsequent raster operations, including the display of our elevation maps, of our, raster, of our raster maps. So now you can see that our display has been masked just to this watershed, just to this basin. Now let's continue our um, hydrologic analysis. Oh, before we go on, um, yes, we're going to compute the smaller watersheds within this watershed. So we can open up r.watershed again, and our input map is going to still be our elevation map. Note that we have this time set a mask around our region, so we're only going to compute watersheds within this large basin. We can change the minimum size of our um, exterior watershed basin, this threshold parameter, to something around, let's try 10,000. And under outputs, we can change the name for the basin to say watershed, watersheds. So this will compute um, let's say the sub-watersheds within this larger basin. Um, and we're ready to run this again. We have overwrite set in case we want to run this multiple times. So this has computed a lot of small watersheds within here. We want bigger ones, so I'm going to go back to minimum size and we want to try 10,000. And that's getting us pretty good sized subwatersheds inside of here. If I want to increase it a bit, let's try maybe 20,000. Starting to get larger, larger watersheds inside of here. Now we've aggregated all of these upper ones into one large watershed that's too big. Let's try maybe 25,000. There we go. That's captured pretty good ones. It's combining watersheds on both sides of the river though. We might do we might do 20,000. So I suggest you run this until you find the sort of scale of analysis that's appropriate. To, um, to better visualize the colors here, um, we can go to set the color table. The command is r.colors. And in the define tab, I'm going to change the color table, for example, to um, the water color table. And um, there we have a map, a raster map of the different watersheds. Again, let's vectorize this. So we're going to use the command r.2.vect, raster to vector. 
our input map will be watersheds, and our output, our input raster map will be watersheds, and our output vector map will be the same name, watersheds. Feature type is area, and option in the optional tab we can smooth the corners. Run that, and we create a vector map. Now we may style this a little bit. Could, for example, change the uh, feature, the line color to white, fill color transparent, and have uh, our line work. We want to view the watersheds over the elevation. We could turn on our uh, shaded relief map with our mask, our raster mask on to show the boundary of the uh, larger basin. Now let's compute flow accumulation for this. Um, flow accumulation is a number of cells um, draining through each cell. So it's going to show us where water is flowing and how, how much water is accumulating as it passes through the landscape. And we'll use the flow accumulation to um, compute the stream network. So let's open up um, r.watershed again. Go to Modules, Raster, Hydrologic Modeling, and we're going to run r.watershed again. Again, our input will be the elevation map. And we need to set the threshold parameter, but we won't, it doesn't matter what it is this time. I'll just set it to 10,000 as a nice default. And under outputs, instead of making the basins this time, we're going to compute flow accumulation. I could call this flow accumulation just accumulation if you want. And in the optional tab, I'm going to set beautify flat areas, use positive accumulation, and allow overwrite. Because I'm going to run this a few times. So let's run the module. And here it's computed um, the flow accumulation. Let's change our legend so we can start to understand this. I'm going to leave r.watershed open here. On the legend, I'm going to double click the existing legend I have, d.legend, and I'm going to change the input map to flow accumulation. If we hit apply, we'll see most of the legend is black, and it's just a tiny bit of blue at the bottom. That's because the high values have accumulated um, a lot of other cells draining into them. This is a large watershed. So what we're going to do is in advanced, we're going to use a logarithmic scale on the legend. That's flag L, and I'll apply. We'll now see the legend scaled logarithmically, which works quite well in this case. So the yellow cells have between one and say 25 cells draining into them. Um, so most of the hill slopes have uh, very little water draining into them. They're the higher ground. Um, and as we start to get to the smaller, the smaller reaches in the uplands, they're starting to collect some water in them. And once we get to the streams, um, these are collecting a lot of water in them. And we see the darker lines in the color table. So this is flow accumulation. It starts to show you where water would flow through a landscape. Now, there's different algorithms for computing flow accumulation, and one of the most important factors is um, the flow direction. So. By default, grass is using a multiple flow direction. 
if we zoom in, we can see that some of these areas become a gradient of water flowing. If we change this to what's called single flow direction, that's um, the eight cells around it, and we run this again, we'll get um, a simpler stream network. We'll keep this on um, multiple flow directions. With the um, with a map of flow accumulation, we can now derive the stream network from this. So our next step will be to run r dot stream extract to turn this into a vector map of the streams. Then we can run um, more analyses on the on the stream network. In this case. All we're going to run is r.streamorder. There's a whole family of add-on modules for GRASS, um, the r.stream family, that have um, many, many different modules for um, hydrologic analysis. A few of these modules are core modules in GRASS. r.stream extract, um, for example. Let's start by running r.stream extract to get the vector stream network from the flow accumulation. Our input data is going to be the elevation map and then the uh, flow accumulation. Oh, um, our elevation map and then we have a threshold parameter again. Um, this is the threshold for um, how many cells are accumulating. Um, so if we want to capture these very small reaches, we might set it somewhere around 50. If we want to start to extract the, the smaller branches um, coming off the streams, we might set it around 200. Um, if we want to just capture the larger streams, we, we might go up to around 500. We can adjust this value and run this multiple times to find the right threshold. Now under input maps, we're going to set our flow accumulation map. And we're going to skip the depressions map. Our output, we're going to make um, these. We need, a, we need the stream raster map for the subsequent steps. Um, and we can also make uh, stream vector map. We also definitely need to make our flow direction map because we'll be using this um, for r.stream order. Under the optional tab, we're going to set overwrite so we can run this multiple times. And we'll go ahead and run this. So if we look at the layers, this is our flow direction. It's um, like an aspect map flow showing the direction on a pixel in which the water would flow. Uh, and here is our vector stream network and the raster stream network. So from the flow accumulation, we've computed this vector network. We want to show just the vector network here. We go to um, style this under stream vector, we might hide the um, 
might hide the symbols by setting the symbol size to zero. This will show up a bit better. We don't need to see the vertices. Now, we compare this with the flow accumulation. You can see that there could be smaller branches on these streams. So this, is, this depends on how many, what level of detail you want on the streams. So if I lower the minimum flow accumulation to say 150, I may start to get some smaller branches on my streams here. You can run this multiple times to start to get the level of detail you want in your stream network. More small branches or, um, or fewer. I'll set this to 200. So now that we've extracted the stream network, Let's, um, let's run r.stream order and find the, uh, find the hierarchy of the stream network. So this is an add-on module. So we're going to go to settings, add-on extensions, g.extension. We'll look under raster, and this will be the r.stream family. So here you can see the r.stream family. We've got r.stream basins, channel, distance, order, segment, slope, snap, stats, variables, watershed. There's a lot of great tools for analysis here. Today I'm just going to demonstrate r.stream order. So let's install that. And then we'll run the module. So r.stream.order. And if you get an error with this, you may need to append after a space dash dash UI to force the user interface to launch. So r.stream.order. Our input raster map is going to be the stream network, the stream raster that we produced with r.stream extract. Stream raster. Then we input the flow direction that we made with r.stream stream.extract, and then our original elevation map. We're also going to put in the flow accumulation map that we made with r.watershed. So these are our input data. Our output, the most important one is um, a vector map that we're going to call streams. This is going to have an attribute table with it, and the attribute table is going to store um, a column for each um, type of um, stream hierarchy or stream order. So we'll have a table with columns for Strahler, Horton, Shreves, Hacks, and uh, topological uh, stream hierarchies. We can also export um, raster maps for some of these and in this tutorial, we're going to do the Strahler stream order. Um, I'm going to export the raster map as well because I'm going to use it to make the legend. And that should be everything we need. So I will go ahead and run this. And now it's computed the stream order. So this new map streams is showing my stream network. Let's go ahead and style this. I'm going to double click on streams. And we're going to go to colors first of all. Um, I'm going to set the, um, oh, sorry, let's go to lines symbols. I'm going to set the uh, symbol size to zero. I want to get rid of the symbols on the vertices. 
and under lines, I'm going to set the line width based on a numeric column. I'll set it based on um, a stream order. So here you can see the columns in the attribute table. You can see the different stream orders, Strahler, Horton, Shreve, Hack, Topological, and so forth. And you can also see some columns for um, uh, parameters of the uh, stream network. I'm going to pick Strahler as the numeric column. And I'm going to hit OK, Apply, to start to visualize that. So here we can see the hierarchy of the stream network. This is hierarchy level five, the thickest stream. Um, and every time it branches, um, it's a lower order. So the heaviest is five, smaller one is four. The stream branching off of it would be order um, three, then two, then one. Now, we can also um, visualize this by color. So I'm going to right click on the streams layer and go to set color table. And we're going to set the color value, the source values from the attribute table. So uh, then I go to define and I'm going to pick the column from the attribute table. Uh, that has numeric data that we can use for the color table. So I'm going to pick Strahler again, and I'm going to set the color table to be, for example, water. I run that, and let's refresh here. And now I have the line and the color based on the Strahler stream order. So we can see the thick blue line, order one, down to the cyan lines, uh, order uh, level five, down to the thin cyan lines um, at stream order one. Now to fix, to set the legend for this, um, probably the easiest way is to first style the stream uh, Strahler raster map of the stream. So here we have it with the Viridus color table by default. Let's just set this to the aqua, the water color table as well. So right click on the Strahler raster layer, set color table, define, I'm going to set the color table to water. And now we can visualize the stream vector and style the legend based off the Strahler raster. So double click on the legend, d.legend, and I'm going to change the input map to the Strahler raster. Apply. Um, make sure we turn off the logarithmic scale. Um, and you can see our um, legend for stream order coming from the raster map. I'm going to um, go to the optional tab and resize this a bit. So I'll set the, the lower coordinate, the bottom coordinate maybe to say 85. And make these nice and small. So here I have a really nice map of the stream network styled by um, line weight and line color um, based on stream order. This tells me about the branching pattern of, um, of the stream network. There's a lot more analysis you can do with the r.stream family. Um, we can overlay the, the stream network on top of, for example, the shaded relief to make a nice visualization of the watershed. You can save your map out here with the um, save display to file and save this as, for example, a PNG.
portable network graphics file. To conclude, I'll note that there are some good data sources for um, watershed analysis. The national elevation data set is what we use today with terrain data that you can use to do watershed analyses in grass. Um, to find um, nationwide um, watershed boundaries um, that are called hydrologic units, HUCs, there is the watershed boundary database, and you can download this via the national map. There are some other great hydrology data sets available, including stream networks with the national uh, hydrography data set on the national map and um, the uh, NHD plus version high resolution is also available on the national map. And that concludes this tutorial. Thank you.